Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 14.7 RC, or release candidate to developers and public beta testers. Usually by the time this video is out, it's available to public beta testers, but it could take a little bit longer than that. Now, a release candidate is a final version that comes out to the public, but it's just released a little bit earlier to developers so we can test it out. And this came in at a very large 4.58 gigabytes that's on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. It will vary depending on device, but generally when you're going from a beta to a release candidate or final version, it's going to be multiple gigabytes to install. Now, if you're a beta tester and wondering if you should delete the beta profile now, I would hold off as Apple has released a second release candidate in the past with iOS 14.6, for example. If they find something major wrong, they'll release that. However, it's unlikely, but it's possible. And that beta profile is under settings, general, and then profile. So if you did want to remove it, that's where you go to remove it, tap on it, tap on it again, and then you can remove it. I would recommend against that, like I said, until the final version is out. And I'll talk more about when to expect that a little bit later. Now I'm running iOS 14.7 RC on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I also have it on the iPhone 10R and iPhone 7. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 14.7 RC that I'm running on my iPad Air 2, along with watchOS 7.6 RC, tvOS 14.7 RC, and macOS Big Sur 11.5 RC or release candidate. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then general, then about, and you can see the final build number is 18 G 6, eight. And this particular build does include some new updates or changes as well. The first thing though, is there is no new modem update. If you're coming from beta five, there's not a modem update when you go to the final version or release candidate, at least on the 12 pro max anyway but there are some new features and changes. And the first thing has to do with a MagSafe battery pack. Apple released this today, MagSafe battery pack for $99. It's a battery pack that goes on the back of the iPhone using MagSafe. So just like your MagSafe charger, you can charge it with the battery pack and then also charge the battery pack, reverse charge it apparently through the cable on the bottom using a lightning port. So we'll have to take a closer look at this when they come out. It says they're available now. You can't pick them up in the store, but they're available July 21st to 23rd based on this. Sometimes they do release a little bit earlier, but that's something they've added support for in 14.7. So if you have an iPhone 12, 12 mini, 12 pro or 12 pro max, you'll be able to use that. Otherwise you'll have to use the older battery packs, but it is a little bit cheaper than previous ones and has a little bit more power as well. But like I said, I'll review that in a different video once it comes out. Now, as far as another update, well, if you go into the wallet app, there's an update there as well. And we had Apple card family and with Apple card family, Apple did say that you'll be able to share your credit with other people. That's a feature that's now available. You can combine credit limits and share one co-owned account with an existing Apple card user. So if I want to combine this with my wife or significant other or someone else as well, you can combine it with anyone. And then once you're combined, you can share that credit limit as long as you trust that person. So it helps someone maybe with lower credit scores to maybe build their credit up, for example. Now, another new feature has to do with the HomePod. So if you go to the Home app and then find your HomePod or HomePod mini, press and hold on it, scroll down a little bit, you now have the option for not only alarms, but timers as well. So they finally added the ability to add timers on the HomePod itself, and you can just set it like you would before with a nice little dial here. So you have that option with iOS 14.7 finally. Now they've updated the weather app in certain countries as well. The weather app can now display air quality information in Canada, France, Italy, Netherlands, South Korea, and Spain. So there's weather quality or air quality here, for example, that you'll be able to see that in the countries I mentioned before. So that's finally available in those countries. Now they've updated podcasts as well a little bit. So if we go into podcasts, you'll see that if we go into our library, I was already there, but if you go into the library, go into your shows at the top, you'll have followed and all you can now display your followed podcasts or all of them. So maybe you want to show some of the podcasts you've been searching for, but you don't want them in your followed all the time. You can just switch between them to better sort through those. So that's something they've updated as well. So it's 
pretty simple, but a minor change. And they've updated the menus a little bit as well, but nothing major here. They've just added that. And that's what they've called out specifically. Now they fixed a bunch of issues in this update also. Now, one thing I mentioned that they have not mentioned is that they fixed a Wi-Fi bug and that Wi-Fi bug is present. If you go into your Wi-Fi and you try and join a network with an odd name. So you'll see, here's the name at the top. If I try and join this network prior to this, it would actually sort of brick the network settings. You'd have to reset the network settings. So let's go ahead and try this. It's just test password one, two, three and we'll try and join it. It will take a moment and we'll give it a second while it joins and it should work without a problem. Now we're joined. And if we go back to Apple, for example, and refresh this page, it should load without a problem. So now it will no longer cause a problem with network settings and you'll be able to switch to whatever network. If it has percent signs in it or not, it, it won't make a difference where it would cause a problem before. Now within music, they've fixed a couple things as well. So if we go into music, maybe you select a recent playlist, for example, you'll see, I have one here, tap the three dots in the upper right. And in the menu option, you'll have share playlist. Now this was always there, but for some reason it wouldn't show up from time to time. This has been fixed in iOS 14.7. They've also resolved an issue I've heard quite a few times when playing Dolby Atmos and Apple music lossless, where it would unexpectedly stop that's been fixed. So maybe you're using your AirPods max AirPods pro, for example, and it would just stop after 15 seconds when playing back music that should be resolved in iOS 14.7 finally. So that's a great sign. Now, if you're using an iPhone 11, now I don't have one with iOS 14.7 on it, but if you're using an iPhone 11, there was a battery service message that may have disappeared after a reboot on some iPhone 11 models. So if it was telling you to service your battery, that is now resolved as well. Also, they've resolved an issue where you're using braille displays for accessibility. And when you're composing mail messages, it would show invalid information that has been resolved in this update also. So all of those things are fixed. And also there's one other thing that's specific to iPad as well. So iPad OS 14.7 RC, like I said, was also released and has all of the same things in it, such as the Apple card family, the Wi-Fi fix, the podcast library as well, the change there. And also they've resolved a, an issue specific to iPads that has to do with the USB C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack where audio could skip if you're using this adapter. Now there's only a few iPads you would use that adapter on. One of them would be the new iPad Air fourth generation. So you can see you have USB C to 3.5 millimeter, for example. If you're using this, audio could skip. Also, the iPad Pro and iPad Pro 12.9, for example, have these options. So any of the USB C based iPads have that, and that should be resolved in this particular update. Now, Apple has also said there's security updates, but they haven't specified what they are just yet. They'll let us know when iOS 14.7 is released to the public. So we'll see those security updates usually post after they release that. Now, as far as overall battery life, I actually reached out to some people that regularly follow me to see what battery life was like for them with iOS 14.7 and had them send me some screenshots. They're using it on an iPhone 12 pro max. And you can see they sent this to me. And the reason I had them do that is I'm using iOS 15 betas full time myself. So I wanted to see what full time battery life was like for other people. And so you can see with about 80% of their usage yesterday, they got six hours and 18 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 44 minutes of screen off time. If we used an another 20% of the battery, we could get about eight hours and 18 minutes or so, give or take. So that's pretty good. Eight to 10 hours is pretty typical. If we look at today, they've used it for an hour and had one hour and five minutes of screen off time and barely used the battery. So you'll see they're under 25% battery life there. And then two days ago, they had five hours and 38 minutes of screen on time, 46 minutes of screen off time, and again, under 80% battery life. So about eight to 10 hours of screen on time. And most people that were using the betas were saying this has phenomenal battery life. Most people say it fixes the problems with 14.6, for example. So that's a great sign. Of course, we'll know in a few days when we do a follow up and more. Now, overall performance seems to be pretty good. After initial boot up, some of these devices were a little bit slow. I do expect that from time to time but scrolling in general seems to be nice and smooth. This is on an iPhone seven. This is an older jet black version. And if we go into music, for example, let it load, let's see how long this takes. We'll go to library. We can scroll through and overall performance seems to be good as far as that part goes. So things are running as, as you would expect. Now on the iPhone 10 R the same thing, 
it's also performing quite well. So I haven't seen any issues with whether that be scrolling, loading apps, stuttering or anything with this update. And that's how it should be now that we're closer to iOS 15 and we're almost done with iOS 14. I think the iPad Air 2 was the slowest when I first booted it up and it just really was sluggish. Now it's fine, but it was pretty slow to begin with. Just going into different apps, you'll see it reload in music there just for a moment and it's taking a while. So it's not super fast. I don't think it's going to be any slower than a 14.6 update or iOS 14.6, but in general, it seems to be a little bit choppy and slow. So that may be processing some things in the background. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, let's take a look at those. I ran those on all of these devices. So we'll go into Geekbench here. And you'll see I scored 1,592 for single core, 4,123 for multi-core. Now keep in mind, I ran this right after installing the update. And so it can vary a little bit and it can actually go up. But compared to the previous version, you can see it's actually a little bit higher. 1592 versus 1587 and 4123 versus 4061 or 4061. So it's doing quite well overall and it's faster than it was on the beta of, or beta five. Now from left to right, we have the iPad. Pad Air 2, then the iPhone 7, then the iPhone 10R, and then the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Again, this will give you a general idea of what to expect if you run this right after installing the update. I do expect it to improve a little bit after all of the background processing and indexing is complete though. Now, as far as when to expect iOS 14.7 releasing to the public, well, I would expect it probably next Monday, but we have seen them release that the next day or later in the week. Now, the reason I say next Monday is we're not expecting those MagSafe battery packs to really ship until then. So I would expect maybe they'll make sure everything's good until then and then release the final version on Monday. I would like to see them do that, but they could release it sooner. We just don't know as Apple has not said publicly. Now, as far as iOS 15 beta three, a lot of people are asking, when should we see that? And I would expect that as soon as tomorrow, it would make two weeks since they re-released the beta two version along with public beta two. So I would expect iOS 15 beta three tomorrow based on what they've done in the past. Again, they could change this. They don't generally go more than 15 days, so we could see it tomorrow or Thursday, but I think tomorrow seems most likely at this point. So that's it for iOS 14.7 RC or release candidate. Look for the public version to release very soon, unless they find a bug in it, like they did with iOS 14.6, then we could have a release candidate too. However, that's pretty rare for that to happen. So I'm looking forward to that as well as upcoming iOS 15 betas, and I'll keep you up to date as soon as they're available as well. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.